my goal is to make world-class wine, the very best wine we possibly can, off of this piece of property. You know, it all started in, in 1972 in the Free University in the San Francisco Bay Area. There's all these hippies, you know, the great spirit of the times. You could teach classes to anybody and everybody. And a couple of Stanford MBAs out of work who had worked in the Napa Valley in the, in the late 60s were teaching a class on wine appreciation in the evenings. I took that class and I spent the next 35 years trying to figure out how I was ever going to get this vineyard operation going. I worked in the high-tech business. I worked for Hewlett Packard for many years. And, uh, during that career, we lived in quite a few different locations. And everywhere I went, I would always, first thing, purchase a soil map, study the area, decide where I was going to have my vineyard. And then, of course, I never actually did it. <laughs> so six tries later, with retirement, I finally got it done. We spent the entire year of 2003 searching, really, and we've, we found this place in December of 2003. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. Jingle bell. Made an offer on it, closed on it, I think, about February of 2004, and then we spent the remainder of 2004 preparing this thing. We're at 1,700 feet of elevation here. We started at about somewhere between 1,000 and 1,100 feet at the bottom of the mountain, so we had to build a road up that mountain. We had to drill a well at the bottom of the mountain and put a pipeline in, build a reservoir to hold our irrigation water, install all these trellises on these pretty darn steep slopes. At any rate, that took a year, and in 2005, we finally planted our first vines. Three seasons later, 2007 is our first vintage. Uh, this year will be our fifth vintage. So it's come along beautifully. This project has been blessed. I, I felt all along it was kind of magical because we set off with just an idea in mind. Uh, we, we, sit, we put together a budget so we knew as long as we stay within that budget, uh, we don't have to panic. You know, we can keep plugging ahead. And along the way, I've tried to work with the very best people, with John Crossland, Dean Harrell, Scott Holly. He's become a superstar. Jeff Cohen is coming aboard this year. The combination of the right site, the right plant material on it, and then a team of, of experts, I think is the key. And I'm intensely involved in every aspect of the winemaking, but there's still a couple of key decisions that I think people are better suited at it than I am. And one of them is when to pick. That's really a tough decision to make. It's a combination of your palate tasting these berries plus the chemistry and so forth. And the final thing is blending, when we finally sit down with our final blends to put them together. There are subtleties there that I think an expert palate is just better than I am. I, and my plan is to always have some help doing that, to tell you the truth. And our goal is to make the best wine that we can make off of this piece of property. That's the only constraint we have, is that it's going to be an estate wine. And to do that, you have to farm it right. We spend a tremendous amount of money farming. We're probably one of the more costly vineyards around in terms of the input that we put into tweaking these things. And we make no shortcuts in the winery as well. So the net effect of that is we spend a lot in order to make that wine. We're still pretty good by though. You know, we're sitting at that $40 range and I think our wines are competitive with a lot of guys that are priced well above us. Stage brew, killing what's inside.